Part two. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what thereat is. <laughs> In this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Upon here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of saintly days of lore. Not the least obstinance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mane of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace, just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven. Ghastly grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little re relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber tore. Bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such a name as Nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow, he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Stay tuned for part three.